North Dakota. I'd like to thank the Senator from Missouri and turn to our ranking member on the Energy Committee, the Senator from Alaska, somebody who deals with energy issues every day. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'd like Senator to from Alaska. I'd like to thank my colleague from North Dakota. I have an, I've had an opportunity to go to North Dakota and see firsthand how in Senator Hoven's state they are embracing this energy renaissance that we are seeing in this country, a renaissance that is truly allowing us to move forward with jobs and economic opportunity, not only for the good of this country, but, but really for, for the good of so many others. When we're talking about our neighbors to the north in Canada, or if you're from Alaska, our neighbors over to the, uh, to the east there, it, there is a recognition that the United States and, and Canada are, are really joined at the well, if you will. And that's a term that I have used quite frequently. But when it comes to energy issues, there are 17 operating oil pipelines between the US and Canada. There are another 30 electric transmission lines. There's 29 natural gas pipelines, and these are all uh, energy infrastructure that cross the border with Canada, whether it's into Montana, whether it's to Washington, whether it's North Dakota, Michigan, Minnesota, New York, Vermont, Idaho, Maine. You, you have to wonder, you have to wonder, aren't these all in the national interest here? What is so unique, what is so compelling about this Keystone XL pipeline that it is not only taking the five years of study that is already done, but is now on indefinite hold for yet further study. So it causes one to kind of go back in time. Let's look at some of the, at some of the uh, pipelines that have been already determined as being in the, in the national interest. Back in, in August of 2009, the Department of State signed off on Enbridge Energy's Alberta Clipper Pipeline. And when you look at what they did in signing off on that, Mr. President, it's exactly what we're talking about here with the Keystone XL. They said, and this is coming from the National Interest Determination on the Alberta Clipper, and I would like to submit uh, that application for the record. But some of the things that provide- Without objection. Some of the things that, that the Alberta Clipper line provided would increase the diversity of available supplies. It shortens the transportation pathway for a sizable uh, portion of our crude imports. It increases crude oil supplies from major um, uh, non-OPEC countries. It allows our countries to cooperate on best practices and technology. And then finally, approval of the permit would send a positive economic signal in a difficult economic period about the future reliability and available of a portion of the US energy imports. These aren't from the Keystone XL pipeline. This is coming from the Alberta Clipper pipeline approved back in 2009 for exactly the same reasons, Mr. President, that President Obama should sign off on the Keystone XL pipeline and sign off now. It's in the country's best interest. It's clearly in the best interest of, of our friend and, and ally and neighbor to the north of Canada. I think we recognize that there is so much opportunity for us, but we need to get out of the way of the stops and the hurdles that have been placed by this administration, limiting our jobs, limiting our economic opportunities, and truly working to restrict our energy independence. And with that, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, I'll yield the floor as I know uh, several other colleagues wish to speak in the time remaining. <clears throat>